So as we were saying, Trump isn't, you know, the president anymore. And the problem we're seeing is that none of the Republicans attempting to follow in Trump's footsteps seem to have his je ne sais quoi, whether because their supporters keep dying of COVID, they're fielding allegations of sex trafficking, or it's because they're just a weird, unlikable little dude. In other words, Donald Trump, for some reason, had a charm to him that these other people just can't duplicate. He was, for all of his many, 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 many faults, really good at coming off as natural and likable to his base. These turds, on the other hand, not so much. In part, I'm sure, because everything they're doing is a pale imitation rather than a new freshness. Uh, a copy of a copy of a copy. For example. I'm Michelle Fiore, and I'm running for governor. I spent my whole life fighting the establishment. I was the first female majority leader in the Nevada Assembly and one of the first electeds to endorse Donald J. Trump. And you better believe I was attacked for it. Washington Post called me a gun-toting calendar girl. And Politico Magazine said that I was the Lady Trump. And I don't care. We need outsiders, fighters, not the same old boring, moderate, compromised, Lou Blazer politicians. Let's start with a three-shot plan. Ban vaccine mandates, ban critical race theory, and stop voter fraud. The Joe Biden administration is coming after me. I'm Michelle Fiore, and I'm ready for the fight. Did she drive all the way to the desert just to shoot three bottles? Why are they full? You're supposed to drink them first, then shoot them, and then shoot, like, more stuff? You had a perfectly good TV to shoot. It was right there! This ad by Michelle Fiore for governor is like several metaphors on top of each other. The first being that these ghouls often think of guns as political props while not seeming actually that enthusiastic about firing them. It's weird to think that anyone could see someone trying so transparently hard to be the next Trump and actually think that they were a viable candidate. Like, even if I was a pro-Trump, gun-loving, anti-mask country boy Cody, images like this would seem insultingly pandering. She's even doing her own campaign fraud scam, and like, come on, lady, play an original song, you know? Like, big deal, Trump also assaulted women, give us something new. For a lot of these lower level people trying to get the Trump vote, there's definitely a large intersection in the Venn diagram of calculating politicians and people who are in need of a serious intervention. I'm not being flippant here. A lot of these folks have a real history of assaults or threats or intense interest in conspiracy theories. And as the GOP moves away from Trump, you're gonna see a lot more true believers instead of opportunists. And they all seem to have a few things in common. The key one being that they have some amount of resources giving them the ability to launch an effective campaign. They're often wealthy, with a background in business, or in some cases simply inherited their wealth. And on top of that, they seem to be extremely lacking in empathy. These two come to mind. Remember them? The one on the right is Mark McCloskey, a wealthy personal injury lawyer who, as you might have guessed, is running for Senate as we speak. This is after Roy Blunt announced he will not seek re-election, continuing a pattern where older establishment Republicans are leaving and being replaced by this MAGA-era group. Gee, would probably be good for Democrats if more Democrats retired, huh? Whatever, anyway, best of luck to Mark McCloskey, guy who likes pointing guns at protesters, who also thinks that 13-year-old rape and incest victims shouldn't be allowed abortions. There's also Amanda Chase, a member of the Virginia Senate who is currently running for governor. Amanda holds the honor of being the first Virginia state senator since the 80s to be censured, both the GOP and Dems voting against her after she posted a bunch of wild horse shit about the Capitol rioters being both patriots, but also secretly Antifa. Which is it? It can't be both, you know. She also took a hard stance against the Derek Chauvin guilty verdict, despite even a lot of the right agreeing with that outcome. She calls herself 
Trump in heels, and part of her greatest hits include wearing a gun to the Senate floor and berating a Capitol Police officer for not letting her park in a secure area. Like, that second thing isn't even a political gray area. She just legally couldn't park there. When she announced her campaign, one of the men cheerfully standing behind her would go on to be arrested with a bunch of handguns with plans to attack a Pennsylvania vote counting site. And yet, none of that is quite as chilling as this next video of her I'm about to show you. Terrifying stuff. Again, not being flippant when I call these people not completely well. I'm being flippant about that last video, but not the other stuff, okay? They have very real histories of violence and sure seem like they could potentially hurt somebody or enable people to hurt other people, and they pose a really big problem for the establishment GOP or anyone pivoting away from Trump. Because while we're fingies crossed, not likely to see any of them in the White House anytime soon, people like Amanda Chase and Marjorie Taylor Greene and Lauren Boebert all represent the GOP's current grassroots side. The only reassurance we have right now is that all of these people, so far, just don't seem to have the national charisma that Trump bafflingly obtained. Hey, thanks for watching that clip. Here's the evergreen end plate to ask you to like and subscribe. It's any day of the year where you are.